Hey, what's going on, positive people, and welcome to yet another recap countdown. And today we have a very, very special guest. He is critically acclaimed as one of the dopest lyricists in this Christian hip hop space. He is a GOM vet. If you don't know what GOM is, that's God Over Money. He is an alumnus or alumni of Rapzilla, the freshman, and uh, he dropped albums like Hope is Dope, Hurry Up and Wait. They are classics. Please welcome to the show, Jared Sanders, a.k.a. Mr. Hope is Dope, a.k.a. Mr. Talk to Me Nice. Welcome to the show, man. Word, word, word. word. Appreciate you, man. Thank you yeah. for having me, dog. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's always a pleasure to sit down with the actual artist. Um, I've been doing these type of uh, recap countdowns for for five years and the, the end goal was always when to sit down with the actual artists and actually talk to them and it's been happening right. lately so uh so i, I appreciate you uh you stopping by here so uh right. so what i want to do is actually for those who don't know what a recap countdown is um i just walk through well i take some time and pour over an album i don't do an album review the next day because right they spend a lot of time and work on this you we just, appreciate that that's appreciated. Yeah, and, and the next day you say, I'm like, oh, that was dope. Where's the next one? Um, but we'll get into the next one later. But what I do here, I take a look at my five favorite bars, my four favorite beats, my three favorite tracks, my two favorite features, and we'll walk through and do one final recap. So we got Jared Sanders in the building. So let's go ahead and get into this. But before we do that, um, I, I just want to talk about your intro track. Yeah. Because um, I thought it was like a really, really good intro. And I think intros are very important when you're gonna take somebody on on a journey like this. So before we hop into my five, four, three, two, one, just talk about the intro track really quick. Morning Devo. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I've I've been out for four years since the last uh project dropped, since Hope is Dog 2 dropped. Um, and as a matter of fact, the last release that I did was Gift of Gab 2, like the tape. Um and so I realized the terrain has changed, you know, like it's it's almost like doing a bid, right? You do a bid outside. You do a bid behind the walls and then you come out and it's like technology's advanced and you know people are out here um you know finally uh you know it's like man instagram don't look like it did when i was inside you know outside so um i decided to you know kind of take it upon myself to kind of speak um and make it a point to communicate where i'm observing man and you know i think um it's also just coming to terms with uh, my own uh, humanity, if you will, uh, coming to terms with my own uh, mortality, if you will, like being able to speak from a place where I could be vulnerable now, I feel like I've advanced in that regard. So right. Morning Devo is just a tone setter, man. That's really all it is. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the way you put that as far as being out for four years. And um, I know you're a sports fan. Um, specifically, you have so many basketball NBA bars. And I love that because I'm a Hooper. So, um, so I'm loving that. But I like how you put that because it's almost like uh, when a player, sometimes when they get hurt, they have to sit on the bench for a while. And right. they, just have to, they see the game differently. Uh, they kind of see like, oh, man, like I'm seeing tendencies more because when I'm in the heat of a game, when I'm subbing in and out, certain stuff I just can't see. But right. when you are forced to sit down for a second and just observe, you see things differently. And it, it kind of seemed like you, like you not only were you weren't on the bench, you were like up in the bowl. Like you was oh, like, in man, the I was in the skybox, man. I wouldn't, <laughs> I was like off the court entirely. So, right. um, yeah, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it, it seems like the tone of this album just had that, like you said, you've been out for four years and it just seemed like, oh, like this is like somebody who's who's played the game, like those analysts who play the game, but also can talk about the game. So that's what right. this album felt like. That's what the intro track felt like. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into my five favorite bars uh, from this project. And uh, let's go ahead and hop into it. Yeah, let's do it. Five bars. I used to pray to have monopoly money, but not of riches and glory. And I ain't tripping off a little bug. He said the treasure of the wicked got a spot for me. Even if it's not, I'm never tripping over broccoli. New me in the world. Protect your chicken, level up your mental. Pay the debt, charge it to the game with all the incidentals. Doubled up, man, it's Yahweh on every instrumental. And both hands on the rock like a double dribble. 
Hey, okay. Cause a wise man said the gift ain't in the show. It's not the honeymoon, it's not the giddy quotes. The real blessing is to find a good thing. It's not many of those in this world, girl. And we just go right God. I'm wondering if I be just a little too informal like you just a homie Word. You see me checking on the phone and think he doesn't know me Word. He know the price I had to pay, he think he doesn't owe me I put the ball up in his hands, he looking up to Kobe Word. Man, why he do that? Player, don't try to play me, I'm rocking with Hova but not a Jay-Z I think of the level he on and I say I'm an underachiever like Brian and AD Yes sir, yes sir So yeah. man, it's a lot to unpack here, it was so difficult Picking out just five bars on this movie. Ah, I was, man. Yeah. I, I was pouring over it, pouring over it. Uh, as you can see, over half of those were were NBA bars. Like I said, like yeah. I'm really, really resonate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and hop back to number five. Um, I don't know if you're if I mean it was a whole lot there. So I don't know if you remember number five. That was the how I put it was it was your line that was like a modern version of Proverbs 13 and 22, where it says, mm -hmm. wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous. Right. You basically said that, but like in a clever way. So I'll pack that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I've learned, like as observing the space, and I think this is kind of why I sat outside for so long. Um, I wanted to make sure that whenever I did emerge again, like I emerged with, uh, with a heart posture that was conducive to be able to serve in the community the right way. Um, and so, it, it, it's kind of one of those things where if the motivation is the finances, if the motivation is to, to have the money, I think you, you kind of missed the point. Yeah. Um, and, and so for me, my, my heart posture finally got to the place where I was like, yo, and I, I think I posted it on Instagram before, like I got to the space in my career where I was like, hey, if I don't rap again, am I cool? You know what I'm saying like am I cool if I'll never rap again and I got to the point where I was like yeah yeah you know what I'm saying um so you know the treasure of the wicked or the treasures of the wicked that I'm not that's why I say uh treasure of the wicked got a spot for me even if it's not yeah. I'm never tripping over broccoli because it's like yeah. it's 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 understanding where you came from it's like yo I'm not even if they don't got the right to, riches you know stored up for me I'm cool yeah, like I'm I'm good. So that was really what that was whole whole thing was about. Yeah, that was that, that's dope, and it's, and it's awesome to hear that you like that. That's how you approach your music, um, because right. it it bleeds through. It bleeds through, and even for me, being a, a content creator, being somebody a CHH Media a personality, if you will, like yeah. it's easy to look and see what other people are doing and say, like, man, like it's it's nothing wrong with what they're doing, but it's outside of the bounds of I feel like what God, how He wants me to run what I'm doing. And it's yeah, just, I'm like, man. Yeah. I can go, I can go do that and try to get more subs, get more likes, get more things. But it's like that's not what he has for me, and yeah. they're not doing anything wrong. That's the thing. It's like it's not even wrong what they're doing. It's just not yeah. for me. So I right. thought that was a really a really dope one. Um, the Kobe's back bar, uh, both hands on a rock like a double dribble, like like that's what I those, mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I felt like when when I wrote it. I was like, they gonna go crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, so um, and it was like set up really well. Yeah, um, but I just I just felt like that was gonna be one of those. And it really, uh, you know, quiet is kept. I feel like this project was so much more overtly Christian mm -hmm. than the album that I made preceding it. And I felt like I got a lot of liberty um, in that, right? I got a lot of liberty in being able to, yo, I was big enough God, you know, the whole time. I was like, yo, we about to, that's why I was like both hands on the rock. Like, cause I'm like, we here now, like we back outside. I'm I'm like overjoyed to, to be creating this content, to be creating this music. Cause I know like it was only God that I was prompted and pushed and motivated to even be able to have anything to say. So, um, yeah, man, it was it's, it, it was a situation. So when that bar, that bar came, I was oh, like, man. oh, snap, <laughs> we, we cooking again. <laughs> yeah, you back, bro. You back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's dope. That's dope. So was Kobe's back. Kobe's back. Was that one of the first songs written on this album? 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say um, for definitely for talk to me nice. Um, it was one of those like the other one like that and three hundred zx were like the first two records. Yeah. Um, like records like baby steps and the breakup. Like those came toward the end, like of the oh. writing process. Got so the, the turn up fun stuff was like first. I was like, yeah, we hit the <laughs> game. Yeah. So that was what that was. That's dope. That's dope. But like I see everything through sports because that's just how that's just how I'm set up. So like mm -hmm. it's almost like like when you haven't played ball in a while and you and you do something nice, you're like, oh, okay, I still got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you start putting the shots up, and then you know, the first one, I don't care how long you've been out, like that first J is either long or short. Yeah, it's, it just is what it is but when you start to lace it again it's like yeah oh all right yeah i remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah i still I got it that's dope. Yeah. that's dope uh let's keep moving speaking of baby steps that was my number three um man we were actually before we before we went live here we were talking about how we have kids like they're in that same bucket that same bracket how, yeah. many, years, how many years have you been married now um we'll be 10 years next month man we'll be 10 years in the game man congratulations yeah yeah we'll be 10 years yeah yeah we just celebrated 12 a few months back so we are like oh, right y'all lit we sit yeah. like in that same category and, but the thing when you've been in marriage for this long you realize that like there's hills and valleys mm -hmm. and it's like it's not about like that like the rom-com feeling it's not about right. it's that. not it's not about it's that not. wedding day feeling when like everybody's dressed up to the nine and families are there and, and the reception is popping off they doing a wobble like that's not what that's what not what like the regular everyday life is like and then you throw kids Correct. in you throw and it goes it goes up and down so i just really like um like the way you put that uh those bars there just talking about how uh just like it's not, it's not about like those those glittery moments so talk to right. us a little, not... a, little bit, a little bit about those baby uh steps bars yeah, like truth be told, like I speak from experience. I feel like I've gotten to the point where now I have more freedom and liberty to speak from my own personal experiences. I yeah. think um, early on in my career, I was kind of rapping to an issue, whereas like of late, I've been able to rap from an issue. Um, yeah. And so okay. like um, wedding, like me and my wife, and I'm pretty sure we'll expound on it as life goes on, like yeah we did not like each other once we got married you know what I'm saying like we didn't have the honeymoon phase like no cap like we got like our honeymoon phase didn't happen until like year eight you know what I'm saying? like it, it like before then it was like the jockeying for position yeah. and so like i can actually speak from experience and say like the gift is not in the show it's not in the wedding yeah. It's not yeah. in the glitz and the glam. It's it's really in finding a good thing and knowing, like the Bible says, you know, a man who findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtain favor favor from the Lord, right? Yeah. Like I didn't realize the favor that was being shown early in marriage. Like it was like, yo, this is difficult, and you know, yeah. like you don't realize that which is good because you know in society we romanticize good to be you know pleasant yeah. but you know what i'm saying celery don't taste good mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but know. it's good for you ah oh, nah you can't have a lollipop little man you got one tooth missing man like, <laughs> speaking of not good for you the lollipop ain't good for you fam it's not and <laughs> kids don't ever see that say hi man so you can go say hi Hello, family yeah he missing one tooth in the front so I'll holler at you, man. Go ahead. Get the, go ahead. Get the lollipop. Go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. Like, yeah. But um, yeah. It's just like those are. That's what it's about. You know, it's yeah. it's it's about the experiences, like the gift of children and the growth that happens and the growth that occurs in marriage. Man, it's not about the the pomp and circumstance. And if I could rewind it, I'd have got married in a box. You know what I'm saying? So you know. Like this is what it is. Like yeah. this is we yeah. we're gonna build this thing from the ground up. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. And um let's let's keep moving to number two. Number two, uh peace of mind. Um again, man, how did like, I don't understand how you did that? Like that was just how you it's almost like the last this whole piece of mind song was a song to me about prayer. And maybe that was yeah. just because I just came off of we did the 30 days of prayer with Holy Culture Radio. And um, so prayer was like heavy on my mind, but right. it just felt like that was 
the other half of prayer, the conversation to where like a lot, a lot of times when we pray, we talk for however long we go and talk and we say amen and we walk away. The other right. part of it is sitting and being quiet. Mm -hmm. And then he speaks to you. And I felt like peace of right. mind was like him speaking, speaking back, like, all right, right. You, you got it off your chest. Now right. it's my turn now. And just like, right. oh man, just talk about that. Then I'll, I, I feel like I'll yeah. talk about that more forever. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, prayer is a conversation. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not just a petition. Like um, the thing is, um, when the Bible even there's even a distinction, um, I, I can't quite recall the address, but it's like um, prayer and petition or prayer and supplication. Like yeah. they're distinct things. And yeah. like prayer, you know, as I continue to dig into, you know, that from a spiritual standpoint is like prayer is the exchange that takes place. It's not just the petition. Like when you talk to God and you're saying, hey, God, this, 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 and you put your request before the Lord, yeah. those are petitions. Those are requests. Like when you're really getting into, you know, intimate prayer, it is the exchange. It's like my will for your will, your words for my words, like my words. I'm trying to get that out of the play. Like, so you already know these things about me. You know, OK, understanding all of these things that you know about me, let me approach you understanding that you are the restorer of my soul. You are the the person that understands the thoughts that I have that I have not actually acted upon. You are holy. You are separate. You are pure. So let me present to you like myself authentically. And then, you know, in that exchange, there's the will of God starts to starts to be communicated and, you know, his revelation of who you are in this conversation starts to evolve. So prayer should bring you low. First, you're talking about a holy God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it should make you be more introspective. Like it should make you because you're talking about somebody that sees you more than more clearly and succinctly than anybody else in this entire world. Right. So in that exchange, yeah, you know, God was like, you, you be like, <laughs> you ever wonder where you got it all from? Like, yeah. this is like the complexities of who we are. Like he created us, you know, so he's smarter than me. Yeah. He's, he's wiser than me. Like, so, so that is what peace of mind and ironically, I did not know how peace of mind was going to go over. And a lot of people, um, you know, privately tell me, man, that record really resonated. And I'm like, I ain't know it was going to do that, bro. Like, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that's that's dope. And it, it also reminds me of, of, again, I don't know the address either, but like the scripture that talks about or just like the maybe it's not even the scripture. Maybe it's just like a, a common thought within Christianity of that, um, like we worship the creator. Um, you know, we worship the created over the creator. So mm -hmm. like God, God gives you something like a, like in the case of basketball and then right. he creates somebody who's a art, who's an artist with it, which is Kobe was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And we start worshiping the object and the artist versus actually like God who put all that in order. Right. And we do that with pastors. We do that with mm -hmm. our favorite podcast hosts. We do. we do. Um, and God's just like, hello, like I created the microphone that that, that your favorite preachers, uh, preaching into. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought that was a really dope. One. Thought that was thought that one was fire. So now for my favorite bar, and um, I, I must say, I mean, I follow you on I follow you on social, so I know how you feel about Kobe, and I know how you feel about Bron. I happen mm -hmm. to like Bron is my favorite player, and I know that that may make you want to stop the interview, but I no, do no it don't, it don't, it don't. <laughs> but I'm 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 an, <laughs> I'm an objective LeBron fan. That's why right. I can laugh at this bar. Yeah. And also say that this bar is right. Yeah. <laughs> because they have kind of been underachieving. Underachieving. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I thought that that was, I thought that was hilarious. Number one, and then, like, the, uh, uh, the Jay-Z line uh, before that. So talk about that, that, that bar there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, like it's, it's, it's going to be, there are going to be some basketball references for me. Yep. And I think that the main reason why is because basketball is timelessly relevant more so than a lot of like current event bars mm -hmm. um where you know some people are like like if i say a bar about 
Blueface and Krishan rock right now in 2024. Sure, there are going to be some people that lived in 2023 and 24 that get it. Yeah. But five years from now, people are not really going to understand that bar. But history is going to prove if LeBron and AD were underachievers. Like history is going to say, since y'all got together, yeah, y'all got a ring the first time. But since then, mm -hmm. y'all have chronically underachieved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's something that history is going to prove. Right. Um, you know, once they put that roster together, a lot of people are like, I don't know. After that fourth ring, Bron got like, I don't know. They might repeat next year. And they, the roster got better. And it's like, it ain't happened. Like, like so. Yeah, so it's a goose egg since then. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big advocate of like history proving the bars worthy of being written. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, man, like pop culture current event bars don't really stick unless you're talking about something from um far or former history as opposed to recent history. Um I never, know, thought so, of that. I never thought of it that way before. Yeah, like Y2K bars don't matter in 2024, like at all. But there was a lot of those, like for punchliners, punchliners thrive off of current event bars, right? Like if you're a punchline rapper, you thrive off of current event bars. Because it's like, people will be like, oh, we made a bar about this thing that right, I right, remember right. right now. But that's why they don't age well. Okay. But, you know, like, Five, ten years, like Cassidy, when Cassidy was on fire, it's not the same Cassidy now. Yeah. And it's because back then he was rapping stuff that was current and relevant. And it was like, man, that was fire. You go back and listen to them same punchlines, and they're like a time capsule. Yeah. Like they don't they don't resonate as well. Which which is cool for a moment, but it, it's it, absolutely like said, the, the longevity just isn't just isn't right. It just isn't there so let me let me go ahead and uh let's move on to uh now oh before i move on is there a bar on on the album that is like your favorite one that i maybe that i didn't uh, mention let's think um that i i mean there was a homage if you will there okay. was a homage to jay-z on backup um like i was like um yeah i literally took the bar verbatim bar for bar i'm from a spot where the hood it could swallow a man bullets will follow a man and so much coke that you could run a slot like and yeah. what i was doing there was really making it clear that even what i've gone through in the past it can clearly be articulated today like it's yeah. it's it's a testament to what i've come through and where i've gone so like I found that to be like, yeah, so cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I'm like, yeah, this is a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so all the Jay Z fans are going to definitely because like, I wasn't like a huge Jay Z fan. Obviously, I respect what he what he's done. So it's 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 interesting how like depending on what your uh what your I guess style is, some bars can kind of go over your head a little bit. So it's cool. Right. It's cool that you uh that you broke that one down for those Jay Z fans who are probably wondering why maybe I didn't. I didn't pick that one, so that's dope. That's dope. Nah, so, you're good. Both hands on the rock like a double dribble is probably the coldest one. I ain't gonna cap. Like that's that's probably the one. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So let's keep pushing. Let's let's talk about the production on this album. Mm -hmm. Four beats. Hey, but you don't really gotta like me. I'm just doing me. Why you wanna fight me? Huh? The little drama don't excite me. Man, I'm just sipping on the Arizona iced tea. Hey. Hey, yeah, I'm just sipping on the Arizona iced tea. Hey, yeah, I'm just wanting to top it. Go with the broccoli, y'all. Uh. What I've been trying to get, man, a blessing at least. And when I'm gonna give it a rest, when I'm resting in peace. Uh huh. Used to see all of the baddies and only would bother with physical features. I was a baller, you see, with a ratchet disorder like Gilbert Arena. Hey, yeah. Back the heck up. If you ain't about his glory, then pack the heck up over here. We let the blessings stack the heck up. I'ma get it and then run it back the heck up. Yeah, better back the heck up. If you ain't about his glory, then pack the heck up over here. We let the blessings. So recognize it for you, give me grief. For you, give me for real, for real. 
Recognize it for you give me great. For you give me great. For real. Said everything is decent, but I don't wanna pretend. Man, everything is decent. I don't wanna breathe in. Just want what you got. Don't want it out of season. Man, the production on here was excellent, and all, I failed to mention this: that um, one thing that I do when I'm uh, doing the album reviews for people who are dope lyricists like you, where it's hard to pick my five, I slide yeah. them in when I talk about the production. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of <laughs> Word. Bars didn't quite. Some of my favorite parts off of those uh, songs that had great production. So, Word. Uh, man, let's let's start with number four. That was Arizona. Um, I guess who. I, I wrote down all the people who produced the other songs, but Arizona, I forgot to write down. So who produced Arizona? Uh, Encore. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Encore. He did, um, Encore did 300? Morning Devo. He did 300 ZX. Um, yeah. he, he did, he did some joints on there. Nice. Nice. So Arizona, it's just, it's, it's super fun, man. It's super fun. And you know how, this is uh like being like a radio host and um and and I help out with people making playlists and things like that. One of my measures of whether a song is just like like a fun song, a song you want to dance to, it's my wife. Oh, I, okay. Because I had this mug on and she was over there getting it. And I was just like, Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah. I get it. Like, yeah, that's like my kids. Yeah, <laughs> like if, if they bopping with it, like I know it's lit. Yep, yep. Yeah, so so encore that was that was my number four. Number three, uh, uh huh, that was produced by J Dot Music. Uh, yeah, man, that's another J. one. J Dot Cole. That's one of those. J Dot Cole. It's one of those radio joints, man. Like that's ones you get second I hear, like I'm putting that I'm playing that on radio. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, yeah, I'm man. That yeah, that's um that was the last record to get added. Like to be honest wow, with you, gotcha, gotcha. um, he sent me and he always do this. He'll be like. I know you're not looking for beats, but check these out. Like he sent like a little three or four pack. And what ended up happening is he sent it to me. And at first I was about to skip it because the little the little Caribbean joint, it was cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, out in the streets, they call it murder. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the drums hit, I said, oh my God. Like, yeah, yeah, this one. So like I, I I think within like a day or two, I was I was in this dude recording the whole joint. So yeah, that one that's my favorite like record on the okay. album. Like nice. that's my favorite joint. Like, but truthfully, and I was talking to Biz about this like uh, today, earlier today, like there's it's only like four, there's like four songs, five songs out of the twelve. Like there's only really like five records um a lot of the other joints are like ver really long verses like morning devo is like one really long verse like 300 zx is one really long right. verse like right. kobe's back is like a really long verse like yeah there's a beat switch mm -hmm. but it's really like a a long freestyle verse we start getting into the thicket things like uh-huh is even dcr is a long verse like yeah. uh-huh is a record like it's like it's built like Oh, we're gonna build on this and make a record. Um, so that was the first one. I was like, I need this joint right here. Yeah, yeah. And that and that kind of uh, brings me to um, a conversation, or makes me uh, want to call back a conversation I had with DJ Jeremiah of the Track Stars. We were talking about people who are super gifted lyrically, mm -hmm. sometimes don't have the ability to hone that to in. Yeah. To sixteen bars, a hook, sixteen bars, and you're out. Or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I kind of got that same feel as I was listening. I was just like, okay, this feels like more like a mixtape. But then yeah. there was a switch when it came to this, when it came to this song, and it was just like record after record after it was just right. right. Was, yeah, was you got it. Like I was like, now we in that pocket. We're in the swing. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think uh yeah, it's I thought that was put together uh wonderfully. Like I said, that's that's one of those ones where I was like, I can immediately like I was I was like, I gotta get this on holy culture, man. I gotta get this yeah. on there. So that was number three. Number two, Back Up, Fireman. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. Back Up. Yeah, Back Up, uh, Fireman produced that joint. Like, okay, okay. Fireman, um, he's produced for Ye on Donda and Donda 2. Okay. Um, so Fireman, like, he actually had an idea um, for the hook that was um, that was pretty cool. Um, I just was like, nah, I think I could do better than that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, so yeah, I went with the Fireman record for sure. Cause I thought like it, that, that was like a, what's the best way to say it? That was a little bit of a, a flex. Like, cause, cause I felt like with the gritty CHAs, you know, I'm homies with like YP and, you know, uh, I'm homies with Q Flow and Sayla and C4. And I felt like they was playing in my face, like not asking me to be on nothing like that was good, right? I felt like they was picking nothing. And all of a sudden, like when I'm, I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna prove something. I'm gonna let y'all know, like, stop playing on face. So that's, that's kind of how that went, man. Um, when backup happened, I was like, let's be aggressive. Let's make this a record. And I'm going to take two dudes who really would be fire on this. Yeah. And I'm going to put y'all on the record. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that's that's kind of how I went, man. I had a lot of fun making that joint. Yeah. And I um for that one, uh, I thought it was a good touch having like somebody like a vet and also uh, up and coming. Right. Person right. in that gritty space. So I thought that, that was I thought yeah. that was great. Um, a little a bit of a flash forward that made things very hard because you only had three feature artists on here, right? In the, in the format of the recap countdown, yeah. Only yeah. Yeah. so I was just like, Man, I think I may, might need to lay this before the Lord. Who should I choose? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a right. little bit, of, that's a little bit of a teaser, uh, right. for, for the for the two feature set. So, uh, let's move on to my, my favorite piece of production on this project, decent falling off now, yeah yeah talk about the production on here so is, is it one producer all the way through for both sides nah of it's two separate ones so okay. uh the first producer's name david arcade okay and like when i was searching through his catalog of production decent was the only one that sounded like it like everything wow. else kind of sounded like it would have been like some brock hampton type you wow. know little party little quirky you know stuff that might have been you know for um other artists like but that one in particular was the only one of its kind so when i heard it i was like man this is kind of cool this little piano loop it kind of reminded me of um everything i am everything i'm not made me everything i am and you got like it reminded me of the graduation joint um but then he brought the guitars in and the horns. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is different. Like, this is yeah. going to be something different. Yeah. yeah. So I liked that a lot. Yeah, man. The, and also another uh, thing I enjoyed about that was just like the, like the mix, the mixing of it. Like yeah. it was, it's an experience. If you listen to it with like some nice over ear headphones or in your car, if you have a decent enough system, yeah. It, yeah. like you can, you, you hear like the pianos are kind of going back and forth. That's my engineer, man. My engineer is a, a scientist about stuff like that. So uh, shout to B Kid. I, don't tell him he nice, though. I be telling him he trash so he stay humble. Okay. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but he did a decent job, man. He did a decent job, pun intended. Yeah, yeah, man. It was uh, it was during the course with the two guitars going back and forth. It's like it's almost like the guitars having a conversation in the background. Right. right I'm trying to right. listen to you. I'm trying to listen to them, and I'm like, okay, right. I can't. Yeah. Only, I can only listen to either Jared or I can listen to these guitars. <laughs> right, you got to pick a side. You got to pick yeah. a side. Yeah, and they were just going back and forth in your ears, just panning back and forth. So um, absolutely. So that's the that's the production piece. But I, I always want to. I always want to ask an artist this. So when you hmm. do you think of your ad libs as a piece of the production? Yeah. Okay. Oh, for sure. Like little, like even on backup, like um, I brought, I told him drop the beat out, uh, I back the heck up, and then I said, oh, like yeah. that was like like hearing some <laughs> like know, funk man. flex type stuff. I was like, yeah, let's add the O, oh, cause that'll make you hit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like better back the heck up, oh. like so. I was doing all that kind of stuff to kind of make it, yeah. you know, something that was fire. So yeah, absolutely, ad libs. All that stuff kind of adds an element because I'm a big proponent of like not leaving empty space unless there's a need to like. But if the empty space is necessary, then just leave it blank, you know. But yeah. if you can have, you know, something that makes it an interesting listen, like I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, man. And then like, and then like, like your ad like you have like your like your your ad like light, and like yeah. your 
like your hung. I can't even like yeah. say, like how do you spell that? Like like if, light light is just light. Um, uh -huh. like it's so funny because like that came so random. Okay. Because I um did um a record off of Gift of Gab two called Sunday Paper Freestyle, and like okay. it was over the Killer Mike like Run the Jewels joint, and then like out of nowhere I was like light like and it just I yeah. was like that's it like like it said like just spontaneous creativity man yeah. so when that happened I was like yeah that's gonna be that's just the ad lib man now people will kind of know yeah. Yeah, so so all that's a part of the production. I love it, man. Um, that was uh, it was, and I'll, I'll, I'll go back and I don't, I, I don't, I share, I guess I hesitate to say this because I don't want you to, I don't want to big up your uh, your engineer too much, but like I feel like I just want, <laughs> I feel like I want decent and falling off just like just the instrumental, just so I can just like ride to it. Like it's just, it's you a, know, it's somebody a, hit me up about that. A home girl was like, "Yo, you dropping the instrumentals?" Like. I, Yo, she really did ask me that, and I was kind of like, "Oh, like y'all really want like me to drop the instrumentals to you?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I and I know that like if there were to be like there needs to be a, a back the heck up cipher with like with all them boys, there really needs to be because yeah. they they ignored you and they didn't have you on any uh, on any of their tracks, so like they should. They should pay you respect by just running like a, a a cipher with all them boys. I think it would be dope, man. Oh man, let me tell you something. Everybody <laughs> outside of C four, I'm trying to pack them up, man. <laughs> like C four just sounds more aggressive. So you know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It works out, but yeah, man. Honestly, bro, like I'd be honored. Like I, but then again, at the same time, like, and I've I've said this before, and I'd be hinting at it, and people just don't believe me. Bro, low key, I'm tired of rap. Like I rapped my heart out for the last seven months to make all of this music, bro. I'm kind of like, all right, the sword is back in the sheath. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm kind of on that type of time. Like, if it don't move me, I'm not picking up the pain. I got gray hair in my beard, man. I'm gotcha, good. Man. Same. <laughs> hey, man, I, I ain't got much of a beard, but it's it's it's, it's gray in it. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> wisdom. It's wisdom. That's all. Yes, sir. Let's 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 keep moving. Let's hop into my three favorite tracks off of Talk to Me Nice. Let's go. Three favorites. Dear hip hop, you want me nothing honestly. On the rail, I think about you often, but it's not like how we started at the lunch tables. One really money on the line, knuckles on the counter, but it lit a spark in me to rhyme for you. And man, I do it for the free and make the time for you. And started rhyming over beats, and I was trying for you. And I was trying to be a beast and pin the lines for you. And tried to shine, it was 50 in the tapes. Back, back being dismissive. And yeah, my little babies, they rock with it, but honestly, that's cause they don't get it. Fan. Daddy duties, call CPS, lady like power that down so we can reconnect. Feeling like she been a side piece, the Instagram time been the currency. I need you to reinvest back then. Your little rap career was a figment, and back then you didn't rap for cheers in the pictures, and back then you didn't have Nice. Shit, I don't even be rapping no more. It's kind of fluid, just like I'm talking with a BPM. Word. But then again, I thought about what Show Baraka said. Dilly response and homie, I was thinking, let's be friends. Woo. And then D and Cray was bickering. Thought they hashed it out, but then it looked it like they didn't. Then maybe they both right in a sense, and we just sensitive publicly as Jesus. But a lot of y'all listen to Cardi being Corinthians. What? Let's go, man. Again, yeah, it was hard to get my top three. It was yeah. tough. But um, I went with these three just because I feel like um, like hip-hop has tropes. They yeah. have common themes. Um, yeah. and, and people who are really MCs, they understand that, and they're able to uh, talk about those common hip-hop tropes, but in a way that doesn't sound cheesy. Because some people, right. you can tell they're making a, like a dear hip-hop song, and it's just kind of like... Right. Absolutely. You're just doing it because... It's the thing to do, right? You're, right. You're not really, you're not really talking from like your heart, right? Um, absolutely. But the way the the way you did your breakup song, um, and the, yeah, like it's just it was phenomenal. It it reminded me of belief when belief left. Yeah. He had a song. I think it was called Baby Mama, and he was talking mm -hmm. about how like hip hop was his baby mama. So all mm -hmm. you guys are my illegitimate or legitimate sons. It was, yeah. it was it was a cool way of doing it. 
And right. this is probably the best one I've heard since. So talk to us about uh, the breakup. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of tired of hip hop. Like she she get on my nerves, man. Like I, uh, cause there's nothing like generally speaking. Like I got to the point where I was just bitter to hear her. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it was just like everybody loves this this you know prostitute. You know what I'm saying? Like this being out here on it and it's like everybody wants to take the title and claim the title and yep. you know wants to say that they hip-hop and then you got one side of that spectrum that's like debauchery and foolishness and sexuality and you got another side that's violence and and drug induced and you got another side of it that is like conscious and you know talking about some witchcraft and you got another side of it that's talking about how much you know what I'm saying? Money can buy and like it's just like, come on, man. Like, like who you want to be? Like, mm -hmm. who do you want to be? And like, I got to the point where it was like, I I built my a part of my hip hop identity on, you know, wanting to buy the Tims and the baggy jeans, just like what I was seeing in hip hop, and yeah. you know, wanting to see like believing that because I cultivated a skill and crafted a skill set that it was going to lead to some kind of success. And it was just like, I don't even play you for my kids. Exactly. So why am I pursuing you? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I would never play you for my kids. Never. You know what I'm saying? Never. So it's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm off you. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if your girl, if you can't bring your girl around your family, she's not your girl. Like, and like real spill that's that's kind of what the whole thing is about yeah and that's a that's that's a really simple and easy way of, easy way of putting it um yeah. and it, it's always cool to hear uh like that common origin story of, right. of um rappers falling in love with hip-hop uh at lunch tables banging on the table right so I, thought, I, so I thought it was interesting no i thought it was dope really just how you how you said that but you just you didn't say that like overtly like you right. said in a clever way to read it's like on your second listen you hear that oh he's talking about like that common yeah verse, just coming out and just saying it um yeah i learned to rap at the lunch table so um so i thought that was really dope um I, again i slid in some of my favorite some of my favorite bars again so that was right. uh, break up and moving on to uh the set slash falling off um and i like both half of it i just wasn't picking one half of it yeah all of it and then like, also uh, i mentioned again like hip-hop tropes a lot of them um there's always especially it hit back in the day back when we had cds because mm -hmm. you the last song and it would be like a break for like two minutes right and then the next sound the, the next song uh would start nowadays right. it doesn't hit as, as well because it's streaming and you can kind of just jump to that part where you want to but i thought that right. was another clever way of just doing something that's hip-hop mm -hmm. giving like a little bit of a break and then pop right song so that's another reason why why i love those two together um so talk to us you talked to, to us a little bit about descent and falling off but uh give us a little bit more yes i mean decent is really just about um being content like that's not a message in the theme that's say. really brought out like it's not you don't hear a lot of that in hip-hop like people being like i'm cool and saying like i want these things but if I don't get it, I'm still cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really hear about contentment. You don't really hear about satisfaction in hip hop. Uh, what you generally hear is grind for what you want. You know what I'm saying? You hear, you know, uh, make the money, chase the game, you know, and all the, the, the women and all of the other stuff will come. And, you know, like, I was like, yo, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. Like if if I don't get those things, I'm good. But falling off is like the segue into the next album. And like the next album, hands down, is my best one. Like it's gotcha. it's a whole different man, it's a whole different level. But I'm looking forward to it, man. it was it, it was a great segue though to get people to understanding the tone. Of the project to 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 recognize how introspective we're gonna get, because um, it's definitely that. So um, I'm 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 excited because finally I get to you know put the name of the project out there, like and let people know. It's kind of like the, at the end of the the Marvel movies 
like Avengers will return. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like with such and such. It was like finally. Like now we can really start to build that story. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. And especially like when you're watching the Marvel uh movie and like the credits roll and everybody yeah. knows that stay in the seat. Stay, stay. In the seat because there's Absolutely. a little bit more that's gonna set up the next. So, um, right. so that, that was that was really dope. Um yeah, then also just the uh, the whole concept of like falling off um right and, and this is maybe just me adding to uh the name of it but like uh decent well actually before i say that let's let's go back to what you were saying about content i thought about philippians 4 when i was when i was listening to the course i was just like yeah. man like this is another again this is um scripture yeah. if, you know, if you know your bible you know this is yeah. scripture. one of those times so um but it, it, I also like the course of how it was just kind of like, like, like decent being two different, having two different meanings. Like everything is decent, Absolutely. everything is decent. But like, so I, I so I like that piece. But then going to what I was getting ready to say, um, falling off. Like if something is falling, it's on its descent. So it's right. like, so, so my my brain was kind of like, I wonder, like, yeah, no, you you you. Okay. Yeah, so you're 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 catching on. Like it was that was okay. on purpose. Okay, okay. I like to, I like to hear that because sometimes I have like because this is art, especially the way you do it. Like in yeah. art can be interpreted, and there's sometimes where I'll I'll hear an artist uh, do something, and I'll I'll kind of add into it, like or I would interpret it this way. They're like, oh, I wasn't thinking that, but that actually works. But that yeah. was actually intentional. So that's that's really dope. Um. So with that being said, my favorite track, D C R. Um, again, I keep talking about hip hop tropes, um, calling out issues, calling out artists. I don't think you were calling out artists, but you were calling out what was going, like what's going yeah, on. Yeah, the battle's not yeah. against flesh and blood, dog. Like, yeah, it, what we really speak into is like some of the things that I was noticing. Yeah, I was noticing some of the petty. I was noticing some of the redundancy. I was noticing, you know, some of the arrogance, some of the entitlement, yeah. like and. You know, a lot of people really thought that on that first verse that I was really talking about a specific person. I wasn't. Like, right. What actually was being talked about is like, this is a common conversation yep. that you see in the Christian rap space. Like, hey, you know, you don't pay me. And, you know, I don't want you just ignore me. Right, right, right. I think that sucks. Like, like, so that's really what it was. Like, it wasn't even trying to like put a face to a name. It was like, yo, but if the shoe fits, by all means, wear it. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm not here to be combative, but I also don't have a problem naming names when I mentioned D1 and Lecrae. Because right. I was like, bro, like, that's what's happening. Like, <laughs> like, right. yo, yeah, yo, like. Yeah, and and let's keep it a bean. Some of y'all are listening to Cardi B and reading Corinthians. Like that's a thing. Yeah. Like we're not about to sit up here. I'm not about to front and act like I don't know what y'all are on. Yeah. Like, but you know, when Show Baraka did something that I thought was very humorous. Yeah. And, I thought it was hilarious. And, yeah. And and Dale was not feeling it. And I was like, dang, y'all can't like <laughs> what's going on with y'all? Yeah. Like, so for me. Like, I just thought it was a, a comical way of addressing some very real issues. Yeah. Um, and those issues aren't going to go away. Like, They're people not. are still going to have these same issues. But you can't say I didn't speak on it, though. Like, and that was the whole purpose of Dear Christian Rapper. Like, wear the shoes. Like, if, if the shoe fits, wear it. This yeah. is something you're going to consistently see as a Christian rapper. These are some consistent themes you're going to see. And so be it. Like I just wanted to let it be known. I see y'all, and for those that understand, they understand. You know what I'm right, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, and the whole thing with Show Barack, Show Barack is like one of my favorite favorite rappers. Um, so, right. And I've been rocked with him since um, um, his Barackology mixtape back in like the late 2000s. And okay. he had a. And you have to understand his his sense of humor. Like he had a skit yeah. there called "Dear Serious Rapper." Yeah. Like, and it was just like poking fun at that Christian rapper who's just kind of like, man, man, it's hard out here, man. It's a it's a book of lamentations. Like he's just like he's kind of poked fun at that. And he's done right. that throughout his entire career. So Absolutely. for me, when I saw it, I was just like, this is on brand. This is show like show. Yes. Yeah. He's silly. It's yeah. Also like, I got it. I got it. Some smart. people didn't get it, but I'm like, 
Oh well, like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So that's that. Yeah. So really dope. And then also, um, also, I obviously I was working on this on um, this album review uh, and spending this time with you. Um, and you made the um, you made the comment about like, what if something happened to Instagram, or or what if something happened with Meta? And sure enough, on that day, something <laughs> something happened to it. And it was funny because I had I was gonna uh, drop some. Um, I was gonna make some posts that morning and yeah. I went through and I was like man what the heck and I was like oh man like I'm not gonna be able to and like I was actually like for a second I was just like kind of bummed out like man like I, I can't even and I just hopped in the yeah. car and started driving to work and I threw on the album and you you said that I was just like see it can very yeah. quickly the 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 core can be cut that quickly that quickly <laughs> so that was that was really um that was really um really like relevant and then I'm trying to look at some of the other I think you you covered covered the rest of them, but I think DCR was just all about it's like you said it's a self check. It's it's all about yeah, awareness. absolutely. That's you it. Have, and you have to be able to have people in your life who can just tap you on the shoulder and say, "Hey, B, come here, come here." Um, and you and no matter what they say, you're gonna give an ear to it because you respect that person enough. Like I have, right. I have, I have a mentor like that. I can I can vehemently disagree with what he's saying, but at the same time, it's like I respect him enough. That I'm going to sit there and I'm going to listen to listen to him because he's my OG, and I feel like right. we need that. We need people like that in Christian hip hop. I think I think Thizzle is one of those people. When Thizzle okay. talk, people tend to like pipe down and listen. Um, and, okay. I, and I think that if people, I think people should listen to you more because <laughs> I think there's a, I think you have a lot of wisdom. I think <laughs> you've been around. I think um, take some time to sit and just observe gives you a perspective that other people don't have um, right. because they've been they've been playing as the game's been evolving so they may not right. notice how things have shifted um right otherwise but on your on your end you've seen this the subtle shifts and be like well i don't i'm not against that but at least i want to have a conversation about that so thought, oh, it was absolutely. Dope. thought it was dope so with that being said um this was the probably one of the hardest portions is the the features portion so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get into it Two features. This for that step brothers y'all should have got. This for the hoodie season that should have dropped. Y'all confuse record sales with real skill. This is for that so called classic album that should have flopped. Ah, homie, back the heck up. I'm in your shoe with Jim getting jacked the heck up. I never let her pass me. The hood's still nasty. The new scope would tell me if a white man ass she. Yeah. You all in the mix and get thrown on your spot, hope you know that they coming to get you I can't understand how you gon' play the position, but don't wanna accept what come with it All it took was a little bit of smut that they put on the glass to bury the vision Big talk if they tell it, they vicious It was hot, they was not in the kitchen Reinvented and call it the new way Old whips and chains, they paid it and polish and sell it And now you a new slave It's Jesus, I follow the new way See Man, mission is so cold, man That yeah, dude, he, 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 he's coming to his own too I feel like for a while he was, um Kind of overlooked, and, oh, yeah. and for some reason people weren't taking him seriously. I I never understood it, but like now oh, yeah. everybody everybody know what time mission is on, and I love it. Oh man. yeah, I love oh, yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, I love it. So let's 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 jump back to back up. Um, and shout out to Kata man, cause like it 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 was impossible. I I started to like just break my break my uh my model here for it, but I was like, <laughs> you know what, I, I got to stay on brand. So so shout out to right. Kata. I thought he did a dope job as well. But yeah. say a lot, man. Um, man, he is he is really really great at what he does and how he's able to slide in and out of like rapping and like the little rap singing and like the little bit of melody that he adds in. So talk to us about uh, about that feature. Yeah, man. Um, so Sayla had a line on there, and it's crazy that you actually started with that. He was like, "This for that step brothers, y'all should have got." Like so. Back in 2019, when we was on the GOM tour, like Sayla was my roommate on the tour. And we was talking for a while oh, about wow. doing a project called Step Brothers. Wow. And it was gonna be like based on the Will Ferrell movie, right? Yeah. And we was gonna we were gonna dress up and wear the I sweater vest. And the wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we was gonna do that whole joint. And um that's why he said it. We should have got, you know, life got the best. COVID came around and it just never came to fruition. Yes, okay. So that's why he was, he came outside like this for that step brothers, y'all should have got. 
Like, Ooh, so, uh, yeah, so that's why, um, you know, I, and I told her, I said, hey, you're going to have to come outside because, you know, I'm, I'm rapping, rapping on here. So when he went there, I was like, yeah, only we going to get it. Yeah. But, but I got it. Like, you're yeah. saying, like, so, yeah, that was that was a dope verse. Man, okay, okay. And I'm, see, like, that's one of those things where, I, where I'm sitting down trying to figure out which I'm gonna, what I'm going to pick. And sometimes it just ironically just happens to where I pick the right thing. So, right. so I'm happy about that. So, um, yeah, man, so let, let's talk about mission. I think Blessings is going to be that one that, like, is going to gather all the streams. Like, that's going to be the one that why people – stop and even check out the album because i feel like that's it's true i don't know i just i just have that feeling about that about that one because it, it has that like that commercial uh type of feel yeah. to it um yeah. but at the same time it still has the substance so talk about uh getting mission on blessings yeah blessing is uh blessing i mean mish is me and him go back we got a couple records together but blessing um that one kind of took on the life of its own um people really gravitated toward it. I'm like, it, it almost hit a hundred thousand like by itself. Um, so that record in and of itself is a really, really cold record. Um, and I just noticed that it started to gain a lot of traction really fast. Um, wow. And and I was like, I was like, where? Like, cause I thought it was fire. I just didn't, I didn't think it was gonna be the one that people gravitated toward. Yeah. Like, uh, but I love it because like there's little intricacies even in the production on blessing like instead of uh you know a traditional snare he used the rim shot like, it was like it was just like for the snare of the record so it, it actually used more of like a real drum feel contrary to what was going on in trap music so like those were little characteristics of the record that sounded cool but it sounded like live at the same time so um yeah those were little things and and it just so happened to have a melody and it was like um i'm like yeah people people really might like this one um and and it just worked man they 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 definitely did yeah man that's um it's dope to hear how 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 that's come together um and 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 the, it's it's picking up steam it's picking up steam and um i know missions he's on a, a really good run his uh what's the name of that song he has everywhere right now marvelous yeah that song is like everywhere right now. So um it feels like it's picking up like that same type of steam. So I'll Absolutely. be I won't be shocked if if somebody picks that up somewhere, some sync opportunity. That will be that's my if prayer. Do, that'll be cold. That'll be cold, man. I'll wait. Yeah. So um, so those are my two favorite, but I do want to ask about um on descent. Who's singing the hook? Me. I thought so. I thought so. Are we ever gonna get that R and B album since you're done with hip hop? <laughs> perhaps. Right? Okay, I'll take a perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a perhaps. So um, that was dope. Um, and it was. It's one of those things where, like, and I think I might have tweeted about this before, like way in the past. I think the conversation came up of like, who are those people who can like, like, there's there's people who can rap. And they can sing a little bit, and you're just kind of like, oh, that's a rapper who sings. Right. People who are like sing, but they can rap a little bit, and you're like, mm -hmm. he's a singer that's a rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's a there's a bucket of people who they are like, both. like you don't know. Like, if you just heard right. them rapping, you'd be like, oh, they're a rapper. If you just heard them singing, you'd be like, oh, like they're a singer. I feel like right. it's you. I feel like Aaron Cole mm -hmm. is one of those. Christian Gray mm -hmm. is one of those. Speaking of Christian Gray. He would have been dope on descent or on, on, on decent. He would have been, hey, he would have been high on there. Um one then, day. What he said one he said one day. One day. Okay. Um, so I, I just and there's probably more. I named three, and I'm probably gonna get in trouble because somebody's gonna be like, you forgot, fill in the blank. But for me, of if course. I had a Mount Rushmore, who would be my fourth? I don't know. Hmm. Who can rap as well as just as well as they sing? Lauren Hill, mission accomplished. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. So, so yes, yeah, so that was. I thought that was uh really, really. I think it's dope that you that you have like that. Like you have that ability to go. You can play in the paint. I'm can a combo play. guard. Yeah, I'm a combo guard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I get so, it. Well, they don't they don't use that term no more. Like combo yeah. guard is not really a used term. It's like because like tweener guards, used to be a term. It's not. 
Yeah, yeah. All, all point guards can score now. You know what I'm saying? Like It's crazy. It really yeah. is crazy, the talent. The talent. I, I know people say that defense is left, and it has to a certain extent, but at the same time, with no hand check. And yeah, the game has been defense. built to help with offense. It's, it's been yeah. built to facilitate more offense, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's every sport. Football is the same way. The PI, the PIs are, are called more. Can't go around. Yeah. You can't hit anybody. Roughing um, the passer. So yeah, yeah. People tune in for offense. Roughness. Right, yeah. they do. They tune in for offense. So, man, I there, there's a as we do our our, our final recap, and you can feel free to uh, if there's anything else in the about the project that you want to that you want to chime in here, feel free to do that. But it, there was like just subtle things, just like when you start the album, it's like you can hear like the tape deck sound. Like small things like that, it just kind of puts you back in that in that space of like how was when we were coming uh, we were coming up because you, you right. you're born like mid eighties right somewhere around there, yeah. so yeah. it's like we grew up in a time where like having a tape and having to take it out and flip it over and put it back Absolutely. in. So, um, so having that touch of like the tape and then how that album is structured with the first half being like those long extended verses, like you said, with like yeah. beat changes, it almost felt like. When a uh hung -huh came on, that's when the tape was turned, was flipped out and turned off, turned over again. So thought that was yeah. dope. Um, I thought the also your, your, like your first lines in uh, Morning Devo, or among your first lines is giving homage to uh, to Bizzle and and, and GOM because yeah. like that's that's like your start. So I thought that was dope. Um, and we we really a lot of the things that I had in my recap, we kind of covered. We really covered because I was really interested in um, like that that feel of, or that the fact that you were away for four years and now you kind of come back. So I want to talk right. a lot about that, but I mean, you, you've really, we, we've, we've really, uh, you just doing what you do, man. <laughs> doing what you do. So is there, is there anything else, um, that you just want to highlight about the project in our closing? Um, I think it's a great start to this story that we're going to tell this year. Um, the story we're going to tell this year is going to be a really, really, really dope story. So stick around, like stick around, guys. Um, I am so excited to be back outside. Um, like I said, this is one of four, one of four. Um, but uh, this is this is the phenomenal prelude. Um, and and I, I look forward to, you know, toward December 31st of 2024, being able to like kick back and be like, like, you know, Thanos in the garden. You know what I'm saying? Like, like at the end of at the end of Endgame, like Thanos just sitting in the garden taking a deep sigh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I feel like that's what it's gonna feel like because it's yeah. it's only up from here. Like I and this is if if people are happy with this, I'm 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 honored. Um, I, I'm ecstatic that people are here and they enjoying the project. We going up and we going up and it's going to keep going up. So we, this is, this is a great start. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's dope to hear that. Like you said, this is the first of four. So yeah. like, that's just, that's encouraging to hear. Um, and then also just like in general, um, like I've had the opportunity to interview Swoop earlier, uh, mm -hmm. um, from last month, we're actually back in January now interviewing you now and it really kind of feels like our veterans in our space are putting out really good albums right. and ironically enough swoop was out for about three years you were out for four years and it just it just kind of feeds into like my my thought process that processes that you can't live a like you can't live a whole lot of life if you're not living a lot of life between projects it's like i'm not saying you can't put out you can put out fire records for sure you can for sure yeah. But albums that you can really sit with and and really just kind of ponder, it takes time for that. You have to yeah. like 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 propaganda said in one of his songs. You got to slow cook. You got to let it marinate. Then you got to yeah. let it sit before you. And I'm a it. big and right. And I'm a big like smoked ribs person. I got and, you. Like smoked meats person. Okay. And so like, man, like that slow cooking process makes it so much more satisfying, man. Like. Yeah. If I just gave a bunch of fast food to people, I don't think they would appreciate the home cooked meals as much. I really don't. Like, and I feel like some albums they come out so frequently. Like, when a new album comes out, I want to go work out because I'm like, I know that that's the feel of it. Right. It's just gonna get me hype. 
Um, but but in this case, I thought you did a, a great job of, um, of putting this together. And hopefully, like you said, come December 31st, 2024, you are kicking your feet up and, yeah. um, and, and enjoying the work that you put in, man. Yeah, man, I hope so, too. Uh, you know, prayerfully, that's what God got for me. But I mean, in addition to other things, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I I'm glad to be able to present it to the world. Uh, the, that's that's really the goal. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, man, um, I got the I got the QR code up on the screen. So for you guys watching and you have not checked out Jared Sanders new album entitled Talk to Me Nice. It is out wherever you uh, enjoy streaming. But we appreciate if you buy. Um, buy, then stream. Yeah, do both. Do both. <laughs> so, um, so if you haven't checked it out, make sure you hit that QR code there so you can check that out. Um, yeah, man, this is this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate your time. Um, and yeah, man, I'm looking forward to what else you have planned for this year. And um, this Absolutely. just might be the year of Jared Sanders, man. Hey man, let us let us pray. You know what I'm saying? The year of the year of our Lord 2024. The light is on the kid. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, man, once again. And for all my listeners, man, I appreciate you guys as well. And until next time, peace in, confusion out, and be positive.